teach a range of courses at my woodworking school, but this is my favourite one. When I taught at the Mark Adams School in Indiana, we called it the Fundamentals of Craftsmanship. Today, on my website, it's called Tool Tuning, though it would be more accurate to call it Tool Tuning and Use, as we spend considerable time on planing techniques. The purpose of the course is to help people with topics that I know are problematical. Largely because they're not taught well in school or at college. The waters are further muddied by the vast range of varied and sometimes conflicting advice that is to be found on the internet. On day one, we look at the preparation, sharpening and grinding of bench chisels. Honing a polished bevel is relatively easy. The main work lies in creating a polished surface on the flat back adjacent to the edge. Manufacturer's grinding is wildly variable. A good chisel may take less than 15 minutes to prepare, where a poor one could take hours. You can see the polished areas on the back of these chisels, and I can also see the area where the manufacturer's grinding marks remain. It's not necessary to polish the whole of a back, but it is necessary to create this polished area adjacent to the edge. A sharp chisel requires little force, and a polished surface is left by the tool. If you want to produce dovetails, of this sort of quality, sharp chisels are going to be absolutely essential. I prefer to use Japanese water stones because of the superfine polishing stones available. I will demonstrate flattening and use and have developed special techniques to avoid the menace of hollow stones. On day two, we move on to the preparation, sharpening and resharpening of slightly cambered plane blades. The slightly cambered edge allows us to perfect squareness of the timber edges, even if they are twisted. The ruler trick is introduced as it will save a great deal of time and frustration with stiction. I explain the steps which may be required for Bailey plane tuning and bedrock styles usually require much less work. Day three is spent working on your planes. I strongly advise a 60 and a half block plane as well as your bench plane. My recommendation is for a number five or a number five and a half as these are much the most useful in my experience. We can however work on fours or threes, but a number six is the largest that we can flatten in a reasonable time. Frog seating is checked and adjusted if necessary, chip breakers are perfected, and the practical effects of azimuth error are explained. If necessary, we'll start to flatten and polish the plane soles. High quality modern planes like Lee Nielsen, Veritas and Clifton will require much less work, though their chip breakers almost always need attention. This gives people an opportunity for more chisel preparation. On day four, work on the planes must be finished by lunchtime, as we need to start planing wood. The planes are all checked, and we look at methods of setting them. All six surfaces of a component-sized example will be prepared to a high level of accuracy. Accurate preparation of timber and precise marking out get us a long way towards a satisfactory result. Errors at the beginning have a nasty habit of accumulating and spoiling the final piece. I hope this description shows why this is such a valuable course. Over the years, my students have often found this course to be a revelation. Thank you.